this is about um, essentially how to propose a library for standardization. Obviously, for this audience, it's mostly what we're talking about are boost libraries. However, um, the general principles of what we're talking about here apply to anything, and it wouldn't surprise me at all if um, particularly small proposals that people in the boost community well, may well have some libraries that they, that they might want to propose that are not part of boost at the moment. Interrupt with questions. That's probably obvious with a small number of people here, but whatever. So we'll look at how to how to successfully pro propose a library for standardization. Uh, but I, I sort of got a sub agenda, and I, we need volunteers to write proposals uh, and and help in other ways. But um, boost has a lot of libraries that the maintainers are either very busy or aren't even active anymore that are interesting libraries. And I, I want to be able to, I don't want Boost to fail to propose libraries simply because no one's, you know, the maintainer can't do the work. Anyone can propose a library. You do not have to be the author of the library. You do not have to hold a copyright on it. Or you don't, you know, assuming it's got a license that allows you that. Specifically, when I put an array up for TR1, I wasn't the, the array library author. Yeah. I'm going to, I mean, I'm going to show one here as an example that I'm, I'm not the author, the author of the library, I just put the, let me give you some background on the uh, C++ standards committee. The, 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 these help you a lot, I think, in understanding why things happen, is why I'm sort of what seems to be a digression. First, understand the C++ standards committee is all volunteer. It is just like Boost. It has no employees, it, it, you can't tell people to do something because they'll just, they won't, or they'll quit or something. They're volunteers. So, uh, another thing is that nothing happens without a written proposal. There are many. There are this and there are that. There are where a lot of argument and discussion happens, and people can wave their arms and say things, but nothing really happens mm -hmm. unless a something is is written. I started to say on paper, we're not that old-fashioned. <laughs> <laughs> but but in, in, uh, um, there's two ways you might write something. If, um, if it's like a little fix to an existing component, uh, the library's issues list is, is the, the paper, as it were. Um, but even that, if somebody comes in and says something's a defect, blah, 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 the, the library work group will say, geez, that's too big a problem to track, to, to tackle through an issue, write a paper. Um, now, the, the, so the committee needs, and the committee is, um, and I should interject this right here, we're at the sesh, at the point in the cycle of, the cycle that standards go through, where we just shipped a major update. Now is the time where we look at the future, where are we going, and so it's a good time to make proposals for new components. That's always true. This time, in particular, they've decided that they really want a lot of new libraries. They want a big expansion in the standard library. And they, uh, it seemed to me, and Alistair is the chairman of the library working group, so he can comment on this, but it seemed to me that there was a tendency to look, to be interested in things that were a little bit of a narrower problem domain that maybe they wouldn't have been so interested in five years ago, years ago. What do you think? You're not so sure of that. I'm not so sure about that. 
there seems to be interest in getting larger libraries so they bring more of a facility with them. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, that's clearly true. It may be part of the push may be coming. You know, it's a it's it's a group of people. They act as individuals, not as some monolithic organization. And that the library working group people are the ones that do the work. So they and and they care about libraries deeply. So they tend to be a little pickier. Her, Bjarne, some other people may want to see a lot of libraries, but they're not doing the work, and so... Uh, well, I'm very happy to see what's happened with the file system for Cosmo. Well, I don't know if that's being mentioned by one in this yeah, one. Yeah, so okay, I won't jump ahead then. Okay, anyway. Uh, so, um, something that's very, very new is we're going to have, we're going to, we're trying to reach out to library authors, and we're going to help, we're going to try to provide some active help for people putting proposals together. And just another comment is, if you enjoy and learn from Boost and Boost Con C++ now, then you'll probably also enjoy and learn from the standardization process. Okay, my sort of teaser to put up on the screen, uh, let's correct it. The C++ Standards Committee doesn't just want Boost authors and Boost proposals and proposals in general. It needs us. They're not going to meet their goals if, if we don't generate some uh, resources. Because the slides will go up whenever I finish them. Uh, but here's some key things. That here's some resources if you're not familiar with the standard how the standard committee works. Some of these resources are uh, are important. Um, some of this may change too because there's a move going on to to um, to, to centralize stuff under a, at a several central website. But as of the moment, uh, the C++ standards committee website is it's it's not particularly informative, it's mostly a storage place where people store things, where, where stuff. But that's where you go for, um, you, 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 I mean, one of the big things you want handy if you're working on proposals is the uh, C++11 standard itself. Um, what, what I find and most people find is they don't actually use the, the, uh, the original 11 standard. They don't pay ANC 30 bucks for a copy. Um, they use the latest working draft because that has corrections and that's what the compiler is working on. It's a little hard to find the latest working draft. As far as I know, you still go to that URL up there and uh, we've got fast connections. So I'm not going to take the time to try that right now. But and you, you look, it lists a bunch of document numbers, and you look for one that's title is Working Draft Standard for Programming Language C++, and you look for the one that has the highest number, that's the latest draft downloaded. The technique I use to help me find it most quickly, if I don't just use the search on the web pages, I just go down the authors, and the steps to find the because I find the author names are much easier thing yeah, to pick yeah, up, yeah. and that's usually with the right document. I, sometimes I've caught myself going down looking for the largest document. You know, <laughs> all these other things are papers and stuff. Even the issues lists aren't that huge and compared to the standards. So anyway, well, I mean that's the kind of thing that drives some of this ballistic on the committee, to put it bluntly, because the the some people on the committee look inward, others look outward. I, I, I believe the committee needs to look outward and make you more. Herb seems to be on that kick too at the moment. Uh, thank you for getting this being recorded. <laughs> okay, now we've got for library working group, um, a, we're starting to do some work on GitHub. GitHub. The actual the actual source file for the standard is up there, and. Uh, uh, so there's a GitHub URL, and if you go to that, you'll get an index page. And one of the things there is a call for library proposals. I like to click on it. Man, we have got fast connectivity here. Um, 
a call for library proposals, and we can actually, it's too small, but we can actually, I'm actually not chopping any of them. Um, this is, this is where, this is the stuff for library authors. This tells you a lot of stuff that you need to know, and we can go through it at some point. Uh, I think maybe we should take a minute to go through it. But among other things, here's a, like a, a, a sort of a template that you can actually use for writing a proposal. But uh, I think, let me just maybe I'll go through the other uh, resources, and then we'll come back to that. Uh, there's also, uh, one of the questions comes up that, that's of interest is, if you're thinking of proposing a library from scratch, you know, you're not a boost library particularly, but does somebody else already propose the same thing? Or maybe you have proposed a library. What's the progress? Where is it going? Okay, uh, Alastair is putting this together, and at least at the moment. This is a, and this this will get updated periodically. Um, I must be looking at a draft because it doesn't have a permanent number there. Uh, it's basically, here's a table of every proposal that's active. And where there's several document numbers, and, they, and they're categorized by where, where they are in the process right now. If there are several numbers, it's because there have been a number of papers. The one with the highest number is because the numbers are sequ assigned sequentially is by definition the, uh, the, the most recent one. And again, we're using, you can spot the color code, we need to go between similar themes. So if there's papers on a related area, they're banded by color. Or just alternate between the colors mm -hmm. so that you've got that theme. If you get interested in standards work, and well, just the, the, there's a lot of administrative stuff that goes in. And if you sort of want to get on the committee and do stuff so you 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 feel useful, the, the first meeting or two while you're kind of trying to figure out what's going on, volunteering to help with something is always a, boy, it makes you real popular real fast. Uh, okay, let's, uh, um, yeah, this is, I gotta, I can't figure out how to shrink this. There's a, this, I'm using open office. I just started to use it for presentations. And mostly it's okay, but there are a few things I haven't figured out. There is a, um, uh, Stepanis, the project editor, has started, let's see if I can do it, it's going to connect me. He started a, a, a thing, a, a, a little write-up of some areas where people have trouble learning um, how to write standard needs. When do you use shall, when do you should? you know, and stuff like that, and he's just got it started, but, uh, and I, that's, so I'm starting to test, which it, it's wonderful, it's been needed a long time, and uh, I'm kind of hoping he will continue that effort of pestering. So there's some resources, we're going to look at some other resources later. Okay, now here's, this is supposed to be trumpets blaring, <laughs> except I don't have any sound file to go with it. This is announced, but this is Herb started to talk about this this morning. Okay. Herb's put up a, we, uh, there is a Google Groups discussion group. It's, it's, there's nothing on it at the moment. But we, it's just this weekend getting it going. And it's crashing and things like that because he's has not ever set up things like this in Google Groups, and there he's actually setting up several things. But it's a it's a um, uh, ISO C++ standard library proposals discussion list. This is a public list. You can join it. You just 
do whatever you do to join a public Google list, Google Docs list, um, Google Groups. It's called Google Groups, that's the right name. And um, it's going to be read and hopefully responded to, if Alistair can talk them into it, and not of library working group members and other committee members. So if you have questions, that there's a place that it's there for questions and proposals, or, you know, about proposals. It's separated from other mailing lists be, so that, you know, it's a place for people that have questions about proposals and there's no question, there's no such thing as being too newbie or a question too naive on this. That, I mean, we might just turn around and point you with a call for proposals if, as opposed to if it's a question that's already been answered. But so is this about proposals in general or specific proposals that have been offered? This yes. This okay. is, <laughs> yes. Just try to clarify. It's people getting ready and then as they get farther into the process, um, at some point, if a proposal starts to go there's some point where it transfers off of this list to a to or does it stay? I don't we well, don't ultimately we need a, a document with an end number supplied yeah. by Clark who's yeah. the what's Clark's title? On the Secretary. 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 Yeah. But this is it's it's the place to get going and, and deal with this. Um, and um, because we're having we're getting very inconsistent results on it at the moment as he figures out all the, this is a Google Groups business group or something that he got going and because it it gives it gives him as the one who's setting these lists up and he set several of them up, public lists. I think he's got four public lists available now. Two for library and uh, two for core language. I think he's got another one that's the same thing, except it's not standard library proposals, it's for, for language proposals. And try to solicit language proposals. And the language side tends to split between core and evolution, which are two different subgroups within the C++ system. We've got core, evolution, and library. And evolution seems to design the language features, and then when they're ready, core deal with all of the wordsmithing. Core, the co folks in core, uh, are, are the compiler writers primarily. The, the, the folks from EDG, from Microsoft, from Intel, they're all they're compiler writers. There's only one or two, like Jens Maurer is the only one I know that sort of a right can think of offhand that's not employed by him. Uh, James Whitman, that's a, yeah, the well, the static James, analysis James, tools people. James Whitman's a static analysis yeah. tools guy. Yeah. So he's the really really a compiler yeah. that it just, yeah. So. But anyway, Herb asked me to put that Google Groups full thing up there because sometimes if you try to find it or the, the, the nice easy URL hasn't been working, I'm going to try to click on this and see what it comes up with at the moment. See, so this is... No, that's, uh, we're sort of close. Oh, that's nice. It's Recently been, viewed on the side. You've got the browser all on the on the far right, in the middle of the uh, screen. Wow. You can browse all the CPP groups. Oh my! Okay. This, this is this is Google. But you've got it under your recently viewed. So my group shows you all your groups, but you came to the Google groups for ISO CPP. So if you hit browse all groups, you'll see all the all the groups under the CPP ISO CPP. Sorry, that Herb set up. Look! Look! I found it. Yeah. There it is. Yeah, the first one, that's the group for, that's the list for stuff in the current standard. Or, you know, it's the second one's the one we're interested in, the proposals list. Uh, and the only, there's only like three messages. It's me saying test message and so. Because <laughs> this, I mean, you know, oh. Can't say. Can't say what's going on, but this is very new. Let's put it this way: it's evolving as we talk. But it's intended to be the place you can go and ask, get authoritative 
authoritative answers uh, to those questions that are bound to come up. Okay, that's, that's a little off on that. Uh, I get to talk a little bit about, I'm going to just quickly go over some of the word, the, the uh, terminology, uh, I, ISO, uh, alphabet soup, essentially. And this hit me because you'll notice that it changed. This is a change. So we're not proposing libraries for TR2. Forget it, there is no TR2. Here's the deal. We're dealing with international standards. These, uh, IS is the abbreviation. These are the fully baked standards, like the C++ standard itself. Uh, TS, technical specifications. These are formerly the type 2 technical reports of TR1. This is best for things that are not quite ready for full standardization. They're not as, I mean, even a boost library that's been out there for a long time. Boost, that, that's great. It gets a lot of existing use, but there's still some communities that boost isn't that well known. What? <laughs> or, or disallowed. Or disallowed, yeah. Okay, we're not allowed to use nah. boost. Anyway, so. a lot of the library people feel much more comfortable moving a, a new library, no matter how good a library it is, into coming out as a TS, formerly TR, because we think of it as beta. You're putting people on notice that this could change. Don't, you know, if we find if somebody reports a big problem, we're going to fix it. Don't be upset about it. Um, some people in the rest of the language committee, the, the rest of the C++ committee may, may feel that we're a bit conservative and perfectionist, and they, there are other, and so, and there's going to, there's a little change in procedure to deal with that. I won't get into that now. There is such a thing as a technical report. These are informative papers. They're not technical specifications. They're, there was one on, there was a uh, type 3 technical report on performance. It's just how to get the best out of C++. It's not a hard spec the way the others are. The other new alphabet soup are these study groups to speed things up. Um, and I'm set up four, two of which I can't remember what they are, but... Uh, concurrency, file system... Concurrency, file system, networking... Modules. Oh, and modules, yeah. <coughs> and uh, con concurrency and modules are... They're, they're, I'm interested in them, but they're not areas I'm expert in, so... Uh, <coughs> these working groups, or study groups, are... work independently, although they report back to the committee. They, they have their own chairs, and the thing that's particularly different about them is that they, in their own mailing list, um, there's, um, they have a lot of, I think ISO calls them domain experts. That's people like you guys, people that are familiar, that are interested in some area and have enough expertise that they want you. And they held a, some of them will just work by mailing list, some will hold meetings. Two of them, networking and concurrency, concurrency held a meeting in S Seattle, I think, somewhere. I think so. Yeah, last week. And they have 40 people show up. And at least 10 of them were people who had never had anything to do with the standards committee, although Herb said he recognized the names of about half of them as being notable experts in the, in the other, and he could tell just from the conversation that the other people were experts too, they just didn't have to know. Or, you know, experts in the sense quite familiar with the subject matter. And so it, it looks successful to go out. So that's some terminology. Revised procedures, this is critically important for library. Instead of having TR2, which is open, which takes us, say, five to seven years to get out with 12 libraries in it, was that how many were in TR1? 
So there's something about something something around there. there. What we're going to do is run stuff in parallel. So there's already two of these things running in parallel, networking and file system. And um, they, when they're ready, they ship, essentially. So particularly file system, because it doesn't look like there's going to be, at least as of the moment, nobody's proposed anything else to go with that other than the boost file system, uh, why not just ship it when it's ready? Don't hold it for years. There's a few limitations on that, that but networking, they're kind of thinking that one is bigger, will probably take longer, but again, why not ship when it's ready? Um, however, here's another difference. The target decision. We're running out, we're working on C++ 1Y tentatively scheduled for around 17, 2017. We're not going to say, and you don't have to say in, in your proposal, what your real target for this is. So they could take, say, file system is ready, and what the, the instructions are, when the working group and then the library working group itself is satisfied with our, our working paper for file system, but then we look at three possibilities, well, one fourth possibility is say it's not good enough, toss it. But hopefully you've done that. Herb put that in his list, I didn't put it in. Hopefully, if it's not good enough, you tossed it long before this. But they could say for whatever reason, no, they want to hold that for the next standard. They could say, I mean, it is a mature library, it, it um, Microsoft is with 2011, when that ships, are shipping a version of it. It's an older version, it's version 2, but for a lot of the, a lot of, a lot of the standards people, that's, the fact that it's version 2 versus version 3 doesn't matter. It's, it's a, you know, it's, al it's a library that's already had a great deal of exposure, and now that's going to increase that exposure. They might conceivably say, Geez, it's fine, we don't need to go to NETS, which is a staging area, essentially. We'll hold directly for the standard. But the other thing, and this is new, pretty new, is to say they'll, no, geez, it could be its own international standard. And, and, and yeah, we ship. I mean, the last two means you ship right away, but it's what status that you ship. If you ship the advantage of, if you thought it was good enough, enough people think it's good enough, strong consensus when required, then y your work's over more quickly. Can I ask a couple points there? Yeah. It's, um, if something like file system comes out today, I think the idea is shipping quickly is a good thing because the next standard seems to be a while away. If we're getting closer to the, stand the next standard shipping, it might be better to, if we're confident it's good enough, rather than <laughs> shipping out as a parallel TS, and miss the boat of that standard coming out. If we're really keen on it, it's got the chance to fold in. The other kind of work I think we want to go fold into C++ one wide rather than go out as a separate TS is if you're interacting with a lot of the existing standard headers. It's lots of enhancements, lots yeah, of things I, that belong in those kind of parts. But it's much more standalone. It's much easier to. Yeah, I'm going to hit that later. That because that's a that's critical enough. I have a slide. And <coughs> the idea of something as a separate IS. Is it, again, my, my mind, not necessarily my mind as library chair, but this, my own personal thinking is something like networking might serve better as a separate standard as opposed to fold it into yeah. the standard that everyone has to ship. Because then it's much, it can be much nimbler and able to better react to the standard it's binding to if they change. Mm -hmm. Because you're talking internet or networking protocols. We don't control the networking protocols, and you might need to be more responsive there. And it's not all big. hardware that you ship supports necessarily. It's it's big. I mean, uh, SEO the proposal would have had 150, I think it was 140 or 150 pages of standard ease. That's almost twice the size of IO streams. People, there might be some discomfort with simply its size that could be resolved by shipping a separate standard. Anyway, that's that. There's a little more flexibility than there has been in the past, Rob. One of the problems I have writing portable code Linux and, and Windows with TR1 
is Microsoft has chosen to put their stuff into the what would become the standard headers, whereas um, GCC chose to put it into a TR1, so you had to include TR1 slash something. Can that be normalized? Because um, otherwise well, I end up well, having it traditionally compiled. Well, it's, I forget when. <coughs> I mean, I realize they're not normative. Okay. Let me, know, but here's, here's, uh, it was widely agreed upon by people who often don't agree on anything, that TR1 caused vendors much greater headache than expected simply because it modified st existing standard library headers. And the, the problem being that, 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 uh, that you don't have as much, people often don't have the as much control over header. Headers are shared between a C group, a C plus group, and apparently you get into internal politics of the big vendors. And the, so here's the deal. I mean, and, and of course, this can change in a moment's notice if somebody comes up with a, each proposal is voted on on its own merits, not on any set of fixed rules. But right now, what people are saying is no changes to existing standard library headers until C++ 1Y. So if you've got a change that the only way it can work is by adding a new member to standard string, for it, just as an example, or any, you know, or you got to say some enumerate somewhere, you need to add a, a you, you, it's got to be held to C++ 1Y. So what, I, so what I would just suggest is warn you off changes to standard headers. Is there another way to do it? And, and I, 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 I would have said that not, something to worry about, and well, none of us thought it was that bad of a deal, but it turned out to be, it really was, it bothered these guys. It slowed, it, it slowed the process of getting uh, TR1 implementations out for people. So, think if there's a way, if it's, you know, I mean, there was one thing I was doing that I figured out a trivial way to do it as its own separate header without. So. Well, the thing that's particularly difficult is if you're not that standard library vendor, it was very hard for a third-party supplier of TR1 yeah. to amend your headers. John yeah. Maddock did immense wonders to make that work for Boost. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, he, yeah. He asked never to do it again. Well, <laughs> right. <laughs> yes, and he also, and, and he had people willing to change, do stuff to help him, and he still, he, yeah, he asked them that. You know, John, it's like John Maddock and Peter Dimmo were essentially created these unique positions for themselves by never showing up at committee meetings in person, they become legends. And, and you know, when they say something, you say, oh yes, you know, so stand up and salute. And if, if it was causing John trouble, we don't want to do much less than anybody else. Uh, the other thing that's very, very important is they're willing to accept proposals into the, they're, and now they're not accepting them into the standard. But they're willing to accept proposals to work on it that do not have standard ease. They do not have to have formal proposed wording in the initial proposal document. And that's critical because we time and time and time have heard from people that sheared off. They, they failed to put in a proposal of what they thought should go in the standard because they didn't they felt so uncomfortable with standard ease. Uh, this, so don't, there's going to be lots of stuff come in where initially there will be no standard ease. I'm going to talk about cases where I feel as a practical matter you should include standard ease. But uh, let's, those, so those are some, okay. Here's the steps you're going to go through. Just You're going to do some preparation and planning so that you're going to write and submit an initial proposal or whoever. Uh, you'll get feedback from the committee in various ways. Um, in the, um, in, in we're going to sort of increase the steps now where you can just post something that goes through this mailing list that I gave you the URL. 
culture where it's where you can get a better URL or where you can get some help with drafts and things like that. And uh, but anyway, there's certainly a feedback loop, probably multi-stage feedback loop. It would oh, maybe a few. There may have been so a, a few tiny proposals written by somebody who had vast experience that went through unchanged. But that's that's not gonna. It's gonna be pretty uncommon. There's usually at least typo fixes. You know. you know. That's what we're trying to think of an example. Yeah, I don't think we can. I think Matt. Enable if went through awfully, no, I'm sure no revision. Anyway, there's a feedback cycle. Uh, a, then, then the library working group gets comf comfortable with it, votes it out of the library working group, and it's it, um, assuming, and it gets presented to the committee and by the library working group chair, it says a few words about it. And uh, there's a committee straw vote, and it then there's a formal vote, and it gets added to whatever working paper it's destined for. Um, then at that point, in theory, you're done. In practice, what happens is um, it, people start to, there are some people in this world who save themselves trouble by not reading anything until it goes into the working paper. And then they start, sh that last group starts shooting at it. And so you tend to like to monitor the issues list at least. And if there are issues, open up. And then, then you, the only way to change, once it's in the working paper, the only way to change it, and this includes library author can't change it either. The only way to change it is to submit an issue go on the issues list that says, I think there's this problem. Here's the proposed fix to it. So you, you, then you tend to monitor that, and you like to see it go through the publication process and whatnot. But by the time you go this far in, you're not really seeing changes to the design. It's just yeah, you're not having you know, the specification a lot of, and minor that. changes. Often people, you don't have to even be involved in that if it's inconvenient. But, uh, I mean, a lot of the changes are they're near type of level and they just many of you said this we've got this requirement table over here that says what you're trying to say more clearly but it's just yeah and so they say geez yeah that's the kind of issue that arises was to say you wrote out some specification but somebody points out well that's exactly the same specification as already given in such and such a requirement one of the key things in writing standards is you you try to avoid saying the same thing twice in two different places. So, uh, anyway. now I want to look at a proposal here. I, I've got it on my brow. Oh, jeez, man, <laughs> this the internet connection here when it works is wonderful. Maybe that's just the browser cache. No, no, it's not. No, I always do this. Well, this is going to be your C drive, so. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it is. <laughs> <laughs> This, is, this machine's older, but it's got a solid state disk in it. And that might be a problem when you post the, uh, the slides. The rest of us wouldn't be able to access your C drive. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. Yeah, no. Oops. No, I shouldn't have. I could have. No, no. Anyway, this is a. Uh, uh, we're going to look at it. This isn't just any library proposal, it's the proposal for Boost Denning. And uh, this is a real proposal. Uh, it, it, it's actually comes from, this is my working, what we're looking at, what that, that repo thing is, is a, uh, it's a GitHub repo, excuse me, not GitHub, it's a Git repo, the actual uh, cloud version of it is on, uh, uh, in, a, in a Dropbox folder. And so it's up on Dropbox, and I have access to it through my uh, notebook machine. I mean, my desktop machine, I mean, notebook machine. Uh, and one of the things I do when I'm working on a, a, a proposal and I'm about done with it, or, 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 or I uh, highlight in yellow things that I'm going to have to go back to and change before I ship it. 
one of the rules you'll earlier in the when you when you know that you're going to want to the way you ship a document is you send email it to uh, Clark Nelson, and by the time you're that far into the process, you'll know his email address or or maybe else there or something. But uh, you never and you get Clark very mad at you because I sub gets mad at him. Uh, if you you never show a document. In a pu any form of public website or whatever, with an N number, and then change it. That so the I don't put I don't all I I've got the number. He's told me what the N number is going to be. D stands for draft. The moment before I email it to him. I change that to an N and tag, you know, I tag it in, a, and so forth and so on. It just that's and that's why that's. In, in, uh, and I didn't write. The, I don't. I don't even know very much about the any library to tell you the truth. I had, I couldn't even remember how it worked internally. I just stepped through it, through the because this dates from the original proposal was in uh, 2006. And, so what I've done is uh, I've, I've taken that original proposal and I can't even remember what the reaction was. And, and, uh, uh, there were was, was some concerns about making sure we could apply the small object optimization, but generally favorable. Some concern about the younger than thing. he's got a better memory. There is a committee wiki, in fact, you could go to and probably find the reaction. But I said, I don't care. I'm proposing this again, no matter what, because it's such a different group now, even if they didn't like it, then they might like it, and then vice versa for that matter, for some reason. It, it was on track for TR2, I can't remember what further... It, it may have just to. gotten set aside because we set all of TR2 aside because we needed to throw all manpower on shipping. So anyway, the way I... D and this is, this is also um, the way Beeman does proposals. It's a real one. Um, and I also... Where the I um, emailed I emailed it a draft to Kevlin before I shipped it to make sure he was on board with it because I wanted his I wanted I try to get co-authors because I believe it makes proposals more important. <laughs> I mean Kevlin's widely respected to say that he is looked at, and he designed this it, it, he you know he picked up. I don't know, a couple of minor little things, or at least he had comments. Uh, the way you usually do this stuff is when you, when a proposal that you're submitting a paper is a revision, you identify it as a revision. Uh, if you it's okay to change the name, but Clark likes to know you've changed the name because he tracks, like Alistair was tracking, what all the papers were for. Well, that's what made it easy to when I started doing that to build the tracking list as well. Mm -hmm. Particularly, I use HTML. You can formats can be submitted in plain text as plain text files, not recommended. Just because, you know, that's not. Right. Bill Plotter, he sends them in plain text. I, I've submitted TXT before as well. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think I submitted all the formats at various yeah. times. Bill Plotter, <laughs> Bill Plotter, so we just live with that. Uh, you know, Bill feels so respected that he doesn't have to worry about prettying up his proposals. I like HTML because I'm just comfortable with it. A lot of proposals, the other probably neck and neck or, or very close to the same number of proposals come in as PDF files. Those are the acceptable formats. Uh, I prefer on the HTML files to put a little table of contents up there. This thing uh, is an introduction. Just says what it is, and I've got and I've got a marked up version too. But uh, introduction, motivation. Um, there's a bunch of stuff. This. This was, uh, yeah, this was, I've actually, maybe this, I probably didn't never pull the latest version. I have sort of improved this a little bit. I have a little revision history, um, some examples. But 
I think one of the points I want to make here is that this is not, any consists of a class and three pre-functions. And the class is not all that big. So no matter how complex under the covers the implementation is concerned, the spec is pretty small when you get down to the spec. The weight of your proposal sort of should match the weight of the component, just in a sense that you're going to bore people, even irritate them, if you write 50 pages of whatever for any. Uh, I do, and particularly any is an existing library. There was a paper about it. I've referenced that paper up there in it. Uh, there's a, it's a boost library. Uh, and these are, now, and I think, I think, looking at the clock, I'm gonna do this now. I wanna call out a few things that I'm saying up here right in the introduction. It's sort of magic words. Somebody left a laser pointer. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a working laser pointer. Um, should I make this bigger? Can, is that readable? Mm -hmm. Bigger would be handy. Oh, big, bigger is probably big. Yeah, just do one. Bigger post. Uh, you know, I, I've said what it does. You just the, sort of the. Uh, it's a type safety container for single values of value types. Uh, just some kind of a bite, uh, a sound bite description of what it does. But then the next paragraph is absolutely and utterly critical, even in a tiny proposal, where I say, the proposal is boot based on the Boost Mini library. I have established that this library is existing practice when I say that. You want to say that. Boost is widely respected in the standard of the, in the library working group. Most of the library working group at one time or another contributes, contributes or supports in some way. They are, many of them know the contents of Boost. So you, you want existing, the, the purpose from my ISO standpoint a lot of this stuff is to standardize existing practice. So even for this tiny proposal, you, you can say that. The boost version of the library is widely used. Um, I don't have numbers to say that, but I, it is my belief that that is correct. It has been a boost library for, I forget, since around 2000 or 2001 or something like that. It was one of the very early ones. Very early ones. Uh, I, 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 you know, it's not some, it's not as much as a, a corner library as some things in Boost. Uh, now, watch this. The proposal is a pure addition to the standard library, it requires no modifications to existing headers. Furthermore, it would have no effect on existing code. User, I should, probably should have said user code. Or I should have said library or user code. Make it damn clear. Okay. Those are magic words. They lower the barrier, uh, they lower serious barriers to entry. On the other hand, if this in some way breaks existing code, you need to call that out because that's an important consideration and you need to treat provide in your proposal rationale, particularly if it's a serious break, uh, or, or worse yet, a silent break, you need to call that, I mean, that's a problem, and you need to call it out and address it. So even though some little, the, the point being, you don't have to write a lot of words. Simple proposal, some pretty simple words, but that, you're just gonna get asked those questions. You might as well put them, put them in, the, in the proposal. Uh, now, the, uh, another thing I want to mention is, um, let's get down, now we eventually get down to the proposed word. Um, so, should you include proposed wording in 
your proposal. Well, this here's my thinking on this. This is a small. This has already been to a bit one. We've seen it once, so why not? But this is a small proposal. The the whole synopsis of the library is is uh, you know it, it's not a huge library. There's that. I mean that's the whole synopsis of the thing. Uh, why wouldn't you? And then you know certainly there's more wording, but if you don't include proposed wording, uh, I mean there people can give reactions to general descriptions and whatnot, but these these in the library working group, these are people who write code. They read code. They understand no matter how good they are at some other things, you know, they're programmers. Or a lot of them are. Some of them are academics and whatnot. But they they read specifications very, very well. They they love to see you know, standardies may be hard for some people to read, but not people in the library of written group, something they understand. So if you can come up with half decent standardies, I would say go ahead and do it. If it's an existing Goose library, you've got near standardies. Okay? You, you, you know, you think, oh, what do we do? Well, a lot of your stuff isn't. You probably have to make a few changes, and the kind of change is up at the beginning there. Uh, I added that. It, it had this clause described. It didn't have this clause described, but the rest of it, and that's just sort of standard for anything, may perform operations of objects of a discriminated type. That's just what's in the current boost documentation. The rest of this is pretty much what's in the boost documentation, or this was at that time. But the only thing I did that turned it something that was very non-standard ease into legit standard ease was I put it in a note. The standard distinguishes between normative and non-normative text. The, the, uh, anything in a note, a footnote, or an example is non-normative text. So you can't, there are a few violations of ISO rules. You can't name a copyright, a, a trademark, and a few rules like that. The project editor will take care of those. But, you know, there's a, it, it's often pretty easy to actually take uh, our, our, uh, the other things as standard ease is writing it in terms of writing the details of the things of, um, of the class, you know, the actual explanations of this for the members of a class or the free functions or whatever. And your boost documentation, you know, your documentation from your library is probably already, I mean, we've, we've tried to encourage people to boost to use that same form of specification. The formatting might be a little different in this and that. Don't worry about formatting. That's not your concern. The project editor, that's, 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 so, you know, why not? And, 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 um, and, and it, even if your standard ease is pretty imperfect, that, that's not going to bother people. That's not why they're going to reject this proposal or accept it. They, un they, they they're going to feel they understand it better if they see you. So for small proposals where you've already got something, I'd say include it. Let, let's get the other beyond that. As I, if I can say, for a small proposal on the scale of any, wording is vital because it lets the committee know that you understand what you're trying to say. On the other hand, the quality of the wording is almost secondary because no wording is going to enter the committee and survive unscathed. But having wording says we know roughly what impact it's going to have on the standard document. We know the shape of the proposal. We know the size of the proposal. <coughs> And if, even if you drop out at this point, the committee's got something it can start with, and we're very good at tweaking and tweezing and moving things forward till we're happy with them. If we have wording, proposals a very real thing. On the other hand, if we go to a large-scale proposal like the networking proposals, it's, I wouldn't say it's counterproductive to have wording there, but you know you're dealing with something where there's going to be fundamental design questions. And if you have a large proposal and then a large amount of wording, it almost inhibits people to 
think they've got a big sea of something to read through. Yeah, and if, so, it's, if it's a big library, well, you know, relatively big library, and your documentation, and, and maybe it's very well documented, but in a form that's quite a bit different from this, it would be days and days and days of work to turn it into standard ease. I, I would really suggest that you don't include standard ease because you want some, you know, maybe they don't like Maybe they don't like the general premises of your library. Uh, they, they, um, I mean, if you're doing traversals, they're going to want iterator-based traversals. They're not going to want some cursor thing that you're, you know, some stuff like that. They may just, they're going to have some questions, and if they don't like the answers, they're not going to be happy with your, with the library. And, and just because it's in boost doesn't automatically make everybody happy with it. So don't, this, this is a big, I think it's a big plus that, that, that we're willing to really seriously look at proposals without uh, wording. Uh, the, rest, the rest of the wording is just, it's the same stuff you already put in. And, uh, so let's go back to one. Okay, we've looked at boost any. Uh, come on, Bob, you know, you can start to see this quite a bit of work, particularly if you, you know, it's maybe not your library, you I should leave this. Um, wider library scrutiny and acceptance. There are, while well, Boost is well accepted for a lot of places, there are projects that you've got to go to. I mean, there are pro some projects that say, must be standard library. No third-party libraries are accepted. Some of the real high-security ones, for example, there's stuff where people's lives are writing on each thing, and they, they uh, it reduces your long-term maintenance, because eventually, if the library stabilizes and you're no longer, um, you know, and it's shipping in the standard, everybody's got an implementation, we just, you know, we'll pull it, why should Eventually, that we will pull libraries from Boost just because they have become so ingrained, and there's no new. They're not being used as experimentals, you know. So, it's a good way to get involved in the C plus plus committee, and that is a pleasurable experience. It's a learning experience. It's professional development experience. Uh, I know the C plus plus committee members, when they're looking for a job, I've noticed how often. <laughs> They are hired. They reappear in the committee. They reappear in the committee. <laughs> as, you know. but, uh, and and that's, that's, that's natural, is that a lot of the committee mem members work for companies that are searching for quality C people, and uh, they sure prefer to hire somebody they have seen at work and know do they, not only can they. Do they know about C++, but how did they get on with people and others? So it's a great, you know, you call that professional development as sort of the code work for that. It's not a good word. But I mean, it's, uh, I mean, we get two committee members here that are working for companies that that was, in both cases, how you made the you know, contact. That's it, and on the learning experience, Writing my very first proposal and trying to figure out how to specify rather than write a library and turn this into standard ease. It's a skill I simply didn't have and it's been invaluable to me professionally ever since. Uh, I think there's far too many software developers, they learn how to write code, but they don't learn how to write a specification. And you understand the value of these things much more once you've just gone through the exercise. So I'm, 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 I mean, an awful lot of the committee, I'll, I'll take credit for this. There are a lot of committee members that I essentially, when I started Boost, one of the objectives was to recruit new, younger people. And that's true, and, and it was effective, and you go through that committee, and there are loads of people on the committee. There are critical people on the committee who came through Boost you know, got a track, and that's what attracted them. To. Now the ones I get, I get, I'm, there's, they're, uh, I call them rats, the ones that 
got on the committee and they got so interested they moved to some other work until you know they moved to core to some core people that Jens I mean Jens Jens is the was the original designer and author of the Boost Random Library Jens is a superb library designer he is one of the best library designers I've ever had the privilege to work with. But the rat has, a, has <laughs> deserted and works on core. And, and if you were to leave core, I think we should uh, pack up and just yeah. <laughs> core <laughs> <it> for <laughs> another language. Core is for everybody else, of course, going to quit because they'll have to do so much work that Jens is doing that. Uh, Doug Gregor, who, I mean, he was a moderator of Boost. He was key on Boost for years, but he's, because of his job, you know, working on Clan, he, he's deserted this for core. And, a lot of folks too, like Dave, spend. They're very important in the general committee process in the extensions and core and whatnot. So they split their time. Uh, okay, we already talked about that. Uh, is existing practice really needed? We always say existing practice is needed. That's yes. It depends on the, what's involved in the library. If it's a single function library to add some math function, let's say, to, to the math header. Or just some, some, yeah. It's well, it, it's, there's no issue over specification or anything because it's every mathematics textbook, essentially. Or, you know, there are some proposals that the library working group can look at the standard ease and is very comfortable that it is useful, implementable, uh, blah, 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 all the things why they normally want. So that's one extreme. It's extremely rare. Okay. But then, then the next step, step up the ladder is you'll hear somebody say, hmm, hey, has this been implemented? And if the answer is yes, people just they ask to see the implementation. Then if it's a little more complex, they'll, if the answer is yes, it's been, can I, you know, is that, a, is that reference, or they'll say, is, the, is there a reference implementation that's available? And on and on. And then you get into the heavyweight libraries, something like networking, or file system, or any, any of the big libraries, regex, or any of the bigger stuff, medium and bigger, and, and even small, even, even the larger small ones, people say, geez, this is too complicated to know how useful it is, to know whether it's implementable, to know what users think of it, to know if it really solves the problem. It's supposed to be the only way you can have it is it's out there. It's been, it's been implemented, distributed, widely used by a, a, a large variety of C++ programmers. And those are the ones where Boost stuff comes in strong, and we've got a lot of libraries that fit into that category, because I mean, you can't ask for more exposure than, than, than other than something. Well, you just it reaches a what? Even if like Microsoft ships up something with their compiler, that that's not touching. I mean, as big as Microsoft is, as good as that compiler is, there are still lots of people that are in a in a different world of operating systems or in a, in scientific problem domains or whatever that aren't aren't seeing it. So. It, 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 one size doesn't fit all, and that's true of a lot of other things. Um, we talked about standard ease. In the what shouldn't go into the initial that front matter about a proposal. It, these are people like it's people like us that read these things. This is not the marketing department that you're trying to impress. All those big words that. You know what? Awesome. It does awesome. not do your proposal any good to say this is an awesome library <laughs> that uh, that uh, will. Rev what do they? What does the app? What, do say? what do certain people say when they get up and present? They always claim it's going to change the world. It's a telephone, and it's going to change the world. I mean, come on. Uh, no, don't, this is a technical audience. Don't don't get off. It did, though. <laughs> well, that was a bad example. That was a crappy example. That was a bad example. Okay. What about present? Okay, and now we're, with this this mailing list that we talked about, you can you can you can get preliminary feedback from committee members. It's 
by this mailing list that, that, that Herb's working so hard to get all fired up. But you don't, you still don't know. It's like, is, is, is the committee members are not all clones of one another. There are some violently differing views of the world and backgrounds too, because there are some people that their background isn't as a working programmer, they may be an academic, they may be a, uh, a writer of textbooks or something like that, and they, they, their views are, their, their, their perspectives are different, and that's valuable. But um, anyway, so, but if you just get feedback from a mailing list, you're never sure does that represent everybody or just one person who's got fast fingers. Um, so the way, the way, what happens, you go to a committee meeting, you stand up, you present your proposal. You're not given a lot of time. Uh, networking, they might spend several hours on, but I mean, for the size of that proposal, that's a tiny amount of time, really. For most of this stuff, you get about 15 to 20 minutes to stand up there and make a pitch. Um, so y you really want somebody at the committee meeting who can, can they can stand up and, and uh, the best way to do it for most people is simply to be show up at a committee meeting yourself. There's usually <coughs> one a year is usually in North America and one a year is elsewhere, most commonly uh, Europe. Uh, the thing about you permitting presenting yourself is it means a knowledgeable person is giving a presentation. And one of the things that staggers me about the committee, about the library working group and the committee as a whole, is how, how people can see a proposal for something they've never seen before, know almost nothing about, and can ask questions and can absorb with an instance critical points that they need to ask questions and grill you about. So it can be a pretty uh, humbling experience. Um, it, the, the feedback of bandwidth is a lot higher when you're there in person. You get private feedback. People will pull, pull you aside and you know say, "Don't do this. It, you know, it's a no-no sort of for cultural reasons or something." Or let you know. Just the private feedback's interesting. Uh, is useful. The meetings are, are endlessly interesting. If you can, if you're interested in what's going on here at BlueSky, then you'll find the meeting interesting. The one important thing to understand about meetings that no one tells you till you arrive is the majority of the work occurs in the bar after the meeting. <laughs> meetings early as you I, would, I wouldn't say the majority. But I would say important work. It, it's when a lot of the progress small, But a lot of the progress is made in small groups, certainly. Whether, uh, and and um, it's, it's, it's a process. And, um, so, but if you can't come yourself, and lots of people can't, and do you have your hand up or you just? Yeah, I have my hand up. Okay, yeah. That is, uh, one thing also is, uh, and I'll, I'll talk now for the evolution, because I don't usually attend uh, library meetings. But we're much, well, much easier much more easily just throw a proposal away of the person who is proposing to go on their own. So if you're proposing to a champion, we feel much less bad about just saying, well, we don't like it, you know, let's move on to the next proposal. But if there's someone in the room, you feel like, well, you know, this guy really <coughs> paid some travel money here, some hotel money. You feel, you feel bad at the human level to just move on. And so you want to give it, you'll, you'll be more lenient, or, you, or you'll be more saying, well, it's not working, but there is hope if you make these changes. Um, so my experience in evolution, for sure, is that in-person proposals have a much higher uh, probability of make it, making it through. But still, it's still not a, an 80% probability, but, you know, depending. Yeah, maybe 50% of them make it to some point. Well, again, I think the difference between evolution and library for a large part of the C++11 cycle was library got the majority of its new features came in around about the TR1 phase. Maybe we're full already. Evolution's always had a full inbox. And hopefully a library's going to have that luxury of yeah, a full inbox as we go forward. But for now, we have been able to work quite well with the champion model. Um, 
oh, it's right. always better if yeah. the feedback you get from being in the room as opposed to being channeled back through a champion. Mm -hmm. There's no substitute for the direct feedback of being there and hearing it firsthand. They're, re they're, they're really, and in, in some other things happen too that, um, and I've seen this happen, that, and, and it depends on who you are and whatnot, but a, a lot of the people that come up in, in they really, man, they know, the, the people that appear in person, they know at least the domain of their library, the library. They, they know a lot about it. They're knowledgeable people. And in some, it's not going to be for any. Because any, you can analyze it just based on the words on the paper. But if you're talking about a networking library, the fact that Chris Kohlhoff could stand there or, or uh, with, with uh, um, some date, time stuff, Jeff Garland, and you see, saying there's nothing that has to do with time that Jeff doesn't isn't authority, can't give authoritative answers in, for, like was with, with, with the networking, uh, Chris is that way. And that increases your faith in the technical work they do. If, they, if you ask them questions and got a bunch of BS back, or, or answers that you really were unhappy with, and you, know, you felt were not well informed, that, that's going to hurt. But I mean, for a lot of people, Geez, if you put together a library and got it in, into Boost and whatnot, or you've been deeply involved with it in Boost, you're going to, that, that helped change. It's better to be there in person if you possibly can swing. But those of us who have acted as champions, and I've done it for a number of Boost libraries, you, know, you, you do your best to present it, but then you get questions I can't answer. And if I'm smart, uh, I'll say that. Oh, I can't answer that when I get it back. But or you really get in trouble as you try to answer. You think you know it, you try to answer it, and you just bog down. And it, it's not. Uh, we're, we're, uh, how to write standard ease and, and method of description. I think if you've invo been involved with Boost documentation, you probably know some of this stuff. But I just, section 17.5 of the standard that's in the library chapter is the method of description, and it's informative. But it's it's you want to probably might want to read that. So that and 17.6, the library wide requirements. You're gonna run into a lot of stuff that if you puzzle your way through it, you realize you already know it, you already do it. But uh, it's it's that those are two clauses in the standard. The shall versus should, must, that kind of standard is that there are a couple of those, three of those that are answered on um, that, that um, wiki, wiki thing that the project editor is working on, uh, we're going to be able to ask those questions and that, that sort of answers will grow, but um, just ask questions and you'll, you'll learn those sort of things. And, you'll, and the other thing is be sure you start to, to develop some understanding of the difference between the normative, in other words, the hard specification text, in the information text. And the non-normative stuff like the examples and one that's really important. I mean, it's not in notes. It's really important. There's nothing wrong, wrong with that. It's just that you always want to distinguish it and distinguish it as non-normative as non or normative. And those are just a few things to watch out for. I'm not going to... That's going to Quick background as to when I wrote Array, I'd never written standard ease before, so what do I do? I went for the closest match in the existing library and blatantly published as much wording as I could, so I at least had something in the right form. You often find there's a good model, in my case it was Vector, in the existing standard to at least give you a start as to what your wording would look like. That's a good point. I've done that in the past. Particularly some of the, like the first, the, the, for any given library, there's sort of some front matter, which is the first sentence or two, or maybe it's several paragraphs. I've often felt a little at sea, what I, how do I start off? Why do you look at what? And you often just start off with this, these sort of very mechanical statements about, and, and you see how it's done and whatnot. I think the last thing we want to talk about is, I. I 
really, really would like anybody in the, everybody in this room and anybody who, if, if the video gets edited and, and uh, when Marshall edits it doesn't decide the whole thing is so bad that he throws it in the trash can, but if, if maybe there's some people that read this and, and watch the video when it goes up on the internet that, that uh, really do give some consideration to volunteering. We need to uh, people to work on specific proposals. Uh, I put to review drafts, and that that may certainly be something, that's a valuable thing you could do. I hope we're going to get through this mechanism herb set up in this, this mailing list, and I hope we're going to find committee members who are willing to review drafts for it. Not well, I'm hoping the committee will actually use this list itself to get iterative feedback between meetings so the draft come into the meeting. Yeah. Post, you know, sample drafts. Right. And get the criticism in the oh, feedback. You know, I should, I, I, I'm almost ready to through with the anything. I should post that up there and ask for a review. Yeah. Bother me about that answer. Yeah. Well, I, I also want to review it, so please put it up. <laughs> here's, uh, here's a couple of other things that where we're going to need some volunteers. I, and the, the first one isn't, doesn't mean a huge number of volunteers, but one or two folks. I love it. Is, you know that status page of, of, of libraries that are in progress? I really like a status page up on the Boost wiki that lists every every library in Boost, including the ones that are already in the standard, and what its standard, what its status is. If there's a proposal outstanding, what you know, what that in number is, and is if there's no proposal outstanding, is somebody working? Is somebody looking at this? Because I, I'm like, I would like to look something and maybe have a discussion if the answer isn't on the boost list, if the answer is not obvious, at every library. Because I think, you know, and, and just think, and is, is this suitable for, for the standard? Do we think it's suitable? And if, if we think it's suitable, you know, if a bunch of people on the list think it's suitable, I, I, I think we want to think about getting a, trying to find, get a proposal in there. Um, the other thing I wanted would like to do myself is, well, okay, then we need uh, champions. If, 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 we, we, if we find people who cannot or do not wish to for any reason go to the meeting to present, um, maybe you might find some other boosters. And I think we want to make it, uh, I mean, personally, I believe, but it's not policy because it's not been run by anybody else, but personally, I believe that talking about proposals and asking for champions and things like that is on topic for the boost mailing list. But, you know, I think that, that maybe, even if you're not going to do anything in terms of um, Make writing a proposal. Think about uh, attending a meeting and and volunteering to be a champion at that meeting or help with. I mean, when you're standing up there presenting, it's often helpful to have somebody in the audience who's watching reactions and trying. You're you've got a lot of stuff in your mind when you're standing up and, and uh, you've got somebody taking notes from the committee that will go up on a committee meeting, you'll have a, uh, a committee wiki that you'll have access to. But um, it, it, and that's new in my presentation. Um, but it, it's helpful to have somebody else who's watching, trying to pick up nuances of, of if, particularly if there's black over some, some aspect of it. Uh, uh, but the last thing, and then I'll, I'll, we can have any discussion, but I'm through my presentation, is that I believe Boost has a fair number of nice little things that might be um, potential additions to the standard that are not libraries. They're thingies. They're in detail. Uh, it, it, um, uh, Boost. Like it's in detail, it's uh, the header is uh, uh, 
lightweight texture. Now, I, I think it would be wonderful if Boost had, excuse me, if the standard had a test, a true test framework, a heavier one. Um, but I, I really think that there's a lot of value in uh, in an extremely lightweight test. It's just you know, it, I mean, there's not much in. It's a tiny little header. Horrors! It uses macros. Horrors! Okay, but we'll see. I mean, that's an interesting one for the, for a committee members. The committee members that are always always saying macros are horrid. You shouldn't use, you know, get rid of macros and whatnot. How do you do that without macros? You, you know, language needs more features in it if you're going to do that without macros. I'm sorry, but it's I don't awfully that, ugly without them. It's awfully ugly without them, and, and uh, I, I think macros are quite appropriate in that case. But you know that one's an easy. There are little things like that. Maybe they're part of a bigger library that's not, for some reason, going to be proposed. That I, I, I really hope that we people, various people, might think, look around, think about that. Is there something that you're pulling out of a detail namespace and using yourself? I think they're probably a fair, no I bet you there's a dozen of those things anyway, that sort of category. They're not libraries, they've never been peer reviewed. Some simple examples that went through the C11 when next and thread. Yeah, there came in a utility, they weren't. I mean, they were in C, but they were sort of, they had just little things. That, yeah. Um, so I, I think we want to also be aware of that of mining essentially boost for that sort of thing that don't appear on that front page list of, of libraries. So anyway, that's the little spiel on trying to recruit interest in the Alistair. I say one last thing on the champion. If papers turn up in our mailing and no champion can be found, it's a library working group chair, I will serve as that role, but I prefer not to because if I'm chairing the meeting, I can't really be championing a paper either. So, in the worst case, if you get the paper in front of us, a champion will be found. Yeah. But it, it's less effective yeah. to go that way. But even, you know, and then stuff, then you know what really happens? What can really happen then? And this is even worse. Okay, Alistair says he's going to champion. Then, and, but you deal, you know, the papers are staged throughout the week, and you're dealing with it, say you deal with it at the end of the week. By that time, Alistair's overloaded and exhausted. And people start volunteering, or he asks for help. You know, and this is true of any library working group here, chairs, not Alistair at first, personally. So somebody says, "Well, I'll do it to help you." And so that person has only five minutes to read, and didn't bother reading the paper, and just reads it, reads it, and then stands up and tries to present it. I mean, geez. Everybody, every paper gets handled. We don't, even if the paper is gibberish, <laughs> we don't drop it on the floor. Okay, but not only it's it's way better if it's not gibberish, but it is better if there's a knowledgeable person who's prepared. Who's not, maybe they don't have to have slides, but you, usually if it's a anything serious has slides. Anything else? Anybody else? Am I getting any interest? Is anybody inter getting any interest at all here? Do you have any particular boost libraries that thinking of writing up? Writing up or helping with? Either or. Either or. Uh, I have vested interest in, in a couple, uh, the network being one of them. Uh, I, I don't really know what state that's in right now, or how much help it needs, or how much longer. You, what you want to do, and, and, and I know exactly what the process is because I saw it, it, it played out in front of me, is that. All you want to need to do to get started is you want to join the networking study group. Mm -hmm. And to do that, you simply ask Herb Sutter or Andy Cumber, you ask Herb Sutter, send him an email, and ask Wasn't him. Wasn't he saying Andy this morning? Well, to deal with Andy, Andy is who the you, what, what, the answer the answer Herb gave when and Herb walked up as somebody asked me this in this, this morning, and I said, "Oh, here's Herb. Ask him." I email Herb and ask. I think is the answer, but here's Herb. Ask him, and he says, "Well, normally it's email me, but here's what you do: 
email Andy Koenig, and I have to know his email address, it's ARK at DCM.org, and tell him I said it was okay. Then you're on a mailing list, you get notifications of meetings, you'll, you'll and see the discussions. The other useful person to mail for networking is Kyle Clapper, who's the work group, subgroup chair. That's, sub chair. that's a good point too. I would, I would, I would, yeah, email him and. and no. I don't have his email off the top of my head, but I know he's also the committee. Uh, not so he, he, he's he's, he's, made, he's, 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 he's the secretary. Now. So no wait, uh, he's the secretary of the. He he takes the minutes during the meeting. So if you look at our meeting minutes. Yeah. You'll find his email. Clark on isn't secretary. Clark's vice chair. Who yes. is what he is. Needless to say, we're really worried about formality. We can't remember who <laughs> might be his title. There is, and I mentioned in you were all this. Uh, I don't think I talked about this thing on the web page on on Booth's website. Um, in, in the, the URL will be in the, the committee the slides that go up. Um, that talks about what it's like to go to a committee meeting, just so you're prepped for what's actually going to happen. Mm -hmm. Particularly the first hour, I mean, sometimes it runs on to two hours. It's god awful, administrivia, and I'm always afraid that somebody will say, "Oh my God, this is what they do in a meeting," and turn around and walk out. <clears throat> and then you break up, mm -hmm. break into working groups, and then that's that's where it gets interesting. And the first. You know, people snoozing, reading newspapers, arguing about useless things. Are, are we allowed to have you know, we vote the minutes in yet from the previous meeting? Yeah, vote the minutes <laughs> in. Yeah. But, you know, announce who the host is. Uh, uh, Again, we also set out the agenda for that week's work. Yeah, you yeah. have a fair. So it's a good summary of oh, what's going to come up. You know, as well. it, 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 it's. It's not, not something that should be done away with. It has to be. It has, but I always, my theory was that, that um, when people get long winded, that we should all have these little flags that we can start waving a certain <laughs> color flag when I'm bored, uh, you know, whoever's talking, please move your, you know, please bring this to some kind of conclusion. And then they could sit there as they're talking. And first one will go up, and then two or three will go up. And then as the whole room turns to, a yellow flag. They'll give the idea that. You know, but uh, yeah. anyone have any other ideas about the libraries they might be interested in working with or writing up? You're right. I see somebody. Come on. I will go look. I will. I'm already, in some measure, supposed to be working with Beeman, but I haven't seen any activity yet. Yeah, like I do, yeah, yeah, I'd like, yeah, and I'm, yes. I mean, three specific libraries that I have in mind I would love to see come out of Boost, but Joel Guzman pointed out, uh, kind of like, you know, the fundamental data abstractions were missing. Any is one, optional is another, mm -hmm. and variant is the third. Optional is yeah. one that, that we use that we'd like to get out of Boost, because we're not allowed to use Boost, but we use it until, and then when we have to convert, we go, oh, Jeez, how are we going to get rid of that? So, so you just said you were going to write a proposal for it? Is that <laughs> I would like to try. Writing is my worst yeah. thing. Uh, optional has been written at once before. We were looking at it for TR2. Okay. It was a little controversial because of the way optional handles references. Oh, yeah. Uh, or a little. Rebinds, references. A little. So that, that was. There are recurring discussions on the developers list about that. And the question of whether the pointer syntax was the right syntax. But certainly the, the semantic of something like optional, there was a lot of interest in. Yeah. But maybe you could get it in without the reference stuff, because we don't use the reference yeah. stuff anyway. But, well, that's the question. You know? <laughs> How strong, I know the author of the paper felt very strongly about the reference stuff at the time as well. So don't give up if that's what you want. In yeah, there, that's what I'm saying. But that that time I, I remember was the, the controversial part of the proposal. Yeah, yeah, so you could do a revision that. and omit that. Huh? It's it's very important when you stand up, and, you know, when you with a proposal that um, you don't knee jerk react against people wanting to change your 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 baby. You know, that, um, a lot of the uh, a lot of the reactions and requests for change are good, and so think think just. Think very carefully. I've made a couple of mistakes where I reacted too quickly. What I should have said is, I need to think about that. 
And that goes both ways, because you might yeah, you, yeah. happily give in, just like, I'll take you my proposal, if I make this quick change, great. If it's something that actually you thought was fairly fundamental and important, don't forget to stand your ground as well. Yeah. That it's a fun balance to find. In, yeah. Well, that, that's something, you know, I, I, just, I was just thinking, you know, I, I don't use optional to a reference, but someone put it in for a reason. I don't know what, I, we don't use that for anything, but I would hate to think that because we excluded something, we broke, we broke, we broke the design in some way. And since I didn't write it, I don't really know. Well, the boost list is a good, one good place to ask that question. The ant, try to contact the original mm -hmm. developer. Who was the original developer? It's a long time since I looked at the yeah, I, I, question. I, I wouldn't even know. ask the question. I would search the, the list because search it's been discussed is, many yeah, times. Okay, right, right. It's been beaten to death already, so the pros and cons. Look, research that. Yeah, I mean, it. it remember, the C++ committee, it's, it's an open source software project, in effect. It's an all-volunteer. Nobody writes a proposal. Well, the answer for why a lot of stuff is not in the standard is no one wrote a proposal. And it's as simple as that. You can't, you not, if you can't, if there's no proposal, we're not doing it. We're not standardizing. And another thing you might find interesting if you start looking at writing up a boost proposal is I believe the majority of boost is still mostly a C plus plus L3 library. You're beginning to get the well, different libraries are adopting at different rates. That's one of the things. That's one of I'm making one last path all this summer. I'm, I'm making one last path through file system, adding well, three or uh, eleven features and testing them so I can be sure I them right. So that's certainly for proposals coming forward now, we'd be expecting to evaluate them in the context of a C++ eleven library using C++ eleven features. Right. So you might have. If you've not done much with C++11 before, this is a good exercise just mm -hmm. to maybe gain experience in some of these more interesting features that you get I, to play with in your own sandbox well, almost. I, as you're, I, I feel perfectly comfortable as a library working group member if somebody comes forward and says, here's a library that I want to propose. It's currently just C++03. Here are the changes I'm planning to make to make it C++11, what I would do then if I was saying, is, do you have any suggestions for other changes? That's not going to cause your proposal, the fact that it is not, that the initial proposal is not C++11 is not going to stop it. Don't let it hold you back, but right. as it might be part of the fun of the learning exercise of taking something that you know is already well designed, and it's a chance to gain exposure and experience with some of the C++ 11 features that carry. Yeah, if, if, uh, if, is there a way you could get like a boost 2.0 started or something where it starts off assuming, at, at work again we have to take all the boost stuff out before we can ship anything. So we often refer to any software library is boosty if it's kind of ancestrally linked to itself so that you know it's got so much boost it's got a, it's got boost enable if instead of standard enable if it's got uh, boost uh, uh, it, uh, if instead of uh, standard conditional you know so yeah, yeah. maybe at some point I don't know how this happens because boost is still trying to maintain backwards compatibility but maybe there's a way to say boost 2.0 that doesn't do that where we can start with fresh libraries that don't promise to be back. That, that's compatible. sort of a that's a different question from 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 the topics here. But yeah. Well, I mean, to get it into issue. existing practice is what I'm thinking. Yeah. You know, I, to get it out there where people will use it now that C plus plus OX is or one eleven yeah. is real. Uh, you know, to have a, a a sandbox for just those kinds of projects yeah. where they the other boost stuff. You know, boost is built upon boost in a lot of cases. Or we could, there could be a new boost that's built on just C++11, which doesn't have all that right, baggage. Right, that, 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 that is, yeah. Move semantics comes to mind too. There's the, the emulation mode, there's all the macros that go with trying to support I mean, the old I know way. for file system that my supporting, just is, is the biggest library I support, the way I kind of feel is, 
uh, from Microsoft, I want to support the last three shipping compilers. So I don't count 11 yet, because that's not shipping yet. So I want to, 8, 9, and 10, I want to support. My interest at that point drops off really, really rapidly. So, um, in, in the same with GCC, you know, the big, the major compilers, I, you know, you want to do, you do want to support past versions, and that means 03 at the moment, but, um, geez, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but, but uh, Microsoft has announced publicly that they intend to, um, after 11 ships, that they, there will be an out-of-band update so that they can get more 11 features into their compiler without us having to wait for the next full yeah, uh, studio. Visual. Visual Studio release. You know, it's, it's out of sync, I think was the phrase they used. And that was publicly announced, you know, secret like that. Uh, so, you know, we're going to be in a state relatively soon where, where and, 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 and we've got Intel rolling out features in their compiler, and C++ 11 is happening faster than C++ 98 happened. So, yeah, Terry, I, I, I think we're still a little bit premature, but, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, it's the support of once in every major sort of every major platform, the major, the most popular compiler for that platform is supporting 11. You just start to wonder uh, how much effort you want to put in on supporting the three stuff. It's a good question. Well, the other question becomes the Boost 20. Do you use Boost shared points internally or standard yeah. shared points mm -hmm. internally? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, and there, there are some mechanisms to sh no. Yeah, but no, there's a lot. Of, like, it's a topic. different topic. Different topic. It's uh, after six o'clock. Uh, thanks. We didn't get a large crowd here, but hey, this is outreach work. We, we're gonna, we're happy with anybody, and if we can attract anybody to, we forgot to put in the tweets to make the video go viral. <laughs> you know, I probably said something. <laughs> I they, I hope they edit. Do they edit these tapes they put up? Ever? You afraid of leaving something for Eric to blog today? Yeah. Well, I just that I mean that thing with Eric Ward was something I said. It was just unexpected. I wasn't expecting to get quoted. Thanks for coming.